A wife came upon her husband one evening as he stared down at the little crib of their baby as the baby slept. And the wife watched him for a long period of time, just wondering what he was thinking and what he was feeling. Finally approached her husband, slipped her hand around his waist and said, a penny for your thoughts, dear. And he said, it's amazing. How can they make a crib like that for $45? Emotions are very strange and mysterious, and sometimes rather violent. Murders are committed, wars occur because of basically emotion. We better deal with emotions, or they will deal with us. Another story is told of a man who had an affair on his wife. She happened to be a dentist, and for some strange reason, he decided after telling her about the affair that he wanted her to work on his teeth. And so she gave him a powerful anesthetic and pulled out every single one of his teeth. Then the man's affair left him because he was toothless. If we don't deal with emotions, they're going to deal with us. We speak much in behavioral science about emotional regulation, about the ability human beings have to regulate their emotions and have kind of even keel emotions versus labile emotions that go up and down and all over the place. It's a sign of mental health when people can regulate their emotions. Emotionalism is indeed a dangerous and harmful thing. However, we have a tendency to go to extremes, and sometimes we think that emotional stuffing is equivalent to emotional regulation, but it is not. Stuffing is harmful. Emotional regulation is healthy. And in fact, learning how to appropriately express emotion versus stuffing emotion is part of good emotional regulation. The deadly relationship sin we're going to focus on now is stuffing. I'm not talking about a turkey. I'm talking about emotional stuffing. We stuff emotions because we find them so difficult to process. This works in the short term in an emergency situation. Sometimes you have to stuff your emotions if you're in a crisis, a car accident, or you know, if someone having a psychotic episode or some other emergency. We put our emotions aside and act appropriately for that situation. But if we continue to stuff those emotions, it will cause a crisis over the long haul. So what works in the short term during an emergency should not necessarily be carried into the long term. And in fact, often the thing that works in the short term really backfires in the long term. What I encourage people to do as they are learning not to stuff their emotions, but to rather express them appropriately, and the replacement for stuffing, by the way, is appropriate emotional expression, what I help people do is expand their emotional vocabulary. You can find on the internet or in books lists of feeling words, and it's amazing how many nuances of feeling exist in the English language alone. For instance, anger can be hostility, annoyance, enragement. Happiness can be delight, merriness, elatedness, or jubilance. There are various colors of those emotions, and I encourage people to expand their emotional vocabulary so that they can talk intelligently about their emotions as they learn to express them. Well, the first step toward being able to express our emotions is actually being aware of them. We call this in psychology interoceptive awareness, self-awareness, awareness of one's own emotions, which is connected to awareness of one's bodily processes. This is all mediated through a little organ in the brain called the insula, which is kind of in your cerebral cortex behind the ear in that area. The insula is also very involved in balance. And so often conditions that entail a loss of self-awareness, such as eating disorders, are often treated through Tai Chi or other ways of developing the ability to balance. One of the things that I use to help people gain emotional awareness is an acronym called HALT. Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Get to the place where you know if you're too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, where you can read your own physical and emotional responses, and then learn to take care of that issue before you proceed and try to solve bigger problems. One of the most important sentences we human beings can learn is, I feel fill in the blank. 
oftentimes simply acknowledging the way we feel in a given moment, in a given situation, takes down our stress levels significantly because it gives us a sense of empowerment. Why? Because we are admitting that we feel that way. We're taking upon ourselves the responsibility of our own emotional responses. And that's essential because what we often do under stress is we attack another person or blame another person for our emotional state. Another tool that I like to use is fact feeling follow through, fact feeling and follow through. In a stressful interpersonal situation, state the fact, admit how you feel about that situation, and then ask for follow through from that other person. Ask them to do something differently than what they're doing. If we don't take responsibility for our feelings and ask for a change in that person in a respectful way, we will often resort to attacking that individual. Let me give you an example. Man comes home late for dinner. His wife says to him, and this is what we typically do, you're late to dinner again. You don't care about us. A better approach is fact, feeling, and follow through. You're late to dinner again. You've been late several times. I feel so disappointed when you come in late. Can we talk later about how we can get you home in time or what else we can do in this very difficult situation? And I promise when you use that respectful approach to asking for change in another person, you will have much better outcome than if you accuse that person. When you accuse someone, it becomes a power struggle. So the first step to this is learning to admit your emotions when they rise up in your heart, to learn to say, I feel, I can remember being in a stressful situation and simply telling myself, I feel aggravated. And as soon as I told myself that I felt aggravated, lo and behold, I felt less aggravated. The replacement for stuffing is appropriate emotional expression. If you will simply learn to express your feelings as they arise, you will find not only a sense of freedom, but at the same time a sense of self-mastery you never thought possible.